This lecture file is the first of several related to Chapter 5 in the Tutorial Manual, which deals with GIS data. The first section addresses GIS coordinates. Following the section on GIS coordinates, we'll talk about map projections, vector data formats, U.S. Census Geographic files as opposed to U.S. Census data files, and geospatial data sources outside of the U.S. Census. First of all, it's important to be aware of the meaning of geographic coordinate systems. We've seen some information on this earlier in the semester, so part of this may be a review. But in the Chapter 5 tutorial, you'll be doing some work where you have to set the coordinate system uh, for your map. Geographic coordinate systems deal with the angles of rotation of a radius anchored at the Earth's center, such as latitude and longitude. So latitude and longitude is a type of, of geographic coordinates. It's used by the U.S. Census and other world and federal agencies. Here's a review of how latitude and longitude work. The zero degree longitude line is the prime meridian. The zero degree latitude line is the equator. This is a system that was arrived upon at an international conference in the late 19th century when it became important to have a single geographic coordinate system to create an earth grid for navigation purposes. This image shows the Royal Observatory at Greenwich, England. At that international conference in the 1880s, countries that were in attendance accepted the British prime meridian as the prime meridian that would go on to become the global standard. Prior to that, there had been prime meridians established in China, in the Middle East, in the United States with Washington, D.C., and in Paris. But this was the one that was most frequently in use by the late 1800s, and it became the global standard. Here's another monument that marks the Earth grid system. In this case, it's the equator in Brazil. The longitude and latitude and coordinates can be read in, in this way. The location for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania would be 40 degrees north, so that's a plus 40 degrees, and minus 80 degrees, which is equivalent to 80 degrees west. Positive values are north of the equator, negative values are south of the equator. Positive values are east of the prime meridian, and negative values are west of the prime meridian. Here's how latitude and longitude coordinates are written. First, they're measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So, a location of 40 degrees, 26 minutes, and 2 seconds north latitude, and 80 degrees west, which would be minus 80 degrees, 0 minutes and 58 seconds west longitude, is what was shown on the map. Another way to write that same location is by using decimal degrees. One degree equals 60 minutes, and one minute equals 60 seconds. So 40 degrees, 26 minutes, and 2 seconds is the equivalent to 40.434 degrees. Latitude-longitude coordinates translated to distances would look something like this. They would take into account the idea that the world's circumference through the poles is 24,859 miles. So for latitude, it works out to be about 69.1 miles for every degree of latitude. The length of the equator is 24,901 miles. Notice that the length of the equator is just a little bit greater in circumference than the circumference by going around the poles. A, a geographic coordinate system use would be shown on a map that might display the latitude and longitude locations in decimal degrees. In this case, it's referencing the location of Pittsburgh. And here's an example of a map that has been shown only in geographic coordinate system, but not with a map projection as well. Notice that compared to some of the maps you've been making in your tutorial manual of Pittsburgh, this one may appear to be scrunched north to south. You can control and access the feature class, uh, the feature class coordinate system by going into properties. Notice that under X Y coordinate system, it tells you the information about the coordinate system and map projection for that particular layer. You can also then make changes on the fly by using the properties uh, for the layer. Another option is the rectangular coordinate systems of the Universal Transverse Locator, or UTM system, used by the U.S. military, the USGS, and many other international systems. 
and state plane, which is a common use for local U.S. government. Much of the data you've been working with in this class has actually been in state plane coordinate systems. The difference between a rectangular coordinate system, such as state plane, and the latitude longitude earth grid system is that the state plane system has a zero zero origin, which means that all values are positive. In this case, they're all counted from the origin point at the southwest of the grid. So all values are counted from west to east and from south to north. Here's an example of UTM coordinates at use. UTM was developed by the Army Corps of Engineers in the 1940s, and it covers the world from 80 degrees south to 80 degrees north. Metric coordinates correspond with distances from the equator, with each coordinate value representing one meter. This is mapped out globally by using 60 transverse Mercator projections for longitude zones. Each one is six degrees wide. The transverse Mercator has the impact of reducing distortion as one moves away from the equator. So by transverse Mercator, what we mean is that the line of tangency on this map has a north-south orientation instead of an east-west one, and it reduces distortion north to south. East-west distortion is, is uh, not a problem on this particular projection because it, in effect, has been created by 60 individual transverse Mercator projections that are tuned for local conditions. State plane coordinates were established by the U.S. Coast Guard and the Geodetic Sur Survey in the 1930s. All uh, values in the state plane coordinate system are positive in feet or meters. They're used by local U.S. governments, originally in the North American datum in A.D. 1927 and more recently in A.D. 1983 or in 1983 HARN, High Accuracy Reference Network, uh, coordinates based on those datums. There are 125 state plane zones, at least one for each state. You are not able to join zones together. They're locally derived, and they follow state and county boundaries, and each zone has its own tuned projection. Lambert conformal projections are used for zones with east-west orientations, and transverse Mercator projections are used for zones with north-south orientations. We'll see that in the next slide. And here we see it. In Ohio, for example, we have the Ohio North state plane coordinates and Ohio South. So we use the Lambert conformal conic projection. Indiana, though, has uh, a different orientation and uses the universal transverse Mercator projection. So here's that map of Pittsburgh now projected in state plane coordinates instead of just being in a simple unprojected geographic coordinate system. This looks like the map that you've been working with throughout the semester. And it tells you that in this case it's projected using Lambert conformal conic, and it tells you that it is a geographic coordinate system. Here are some tips related to the use of ArcGIS. Always assign coordinates according to the agency. In other words, with the U.S. Census Bureau, we see data in geographic coordinate systems. And we see, for local data, such as the city of Pittsburgh, state plane coordinate system in use. Here's the example of the U.S. Census Bureau with geographic coordinates, data with block groups. And here's the city of Pittsburgh, state plane coordinates with sidewalks. Keep in mind that the first layer that's added to ArcMap sets the XY coordinate system for the whole data frame. So it's critical that if you're removing data and replacing it with new data, you should always start with a new map so that you can refresh the coordinate system with the first data layer that you add. Additional layers will overlay properly as long as the correct coordinate system is assigned to the feature class. So for example, make sure that you have a geographic coordinate system assigned to U.S. Census files and state plane coordinate system assigned to local government files. In use of shapefiles, you'll see these the inside the shapefiles as projection files, .prj. We'll talk a bit more about file types a little later on. Here's an example where the sidewalk map and state plane was added first and block groups were then brought in and they will match the other projection. And it shows you within the data frame that 
the first one that was brought in, which was the state plane data, becomes the default projection for the data frame. And this is the end of the lecture on GIS coordinates. Next, we'll talk about map projections.